One of the most iconic features of the 2016 isekai anime ReZero starting life in another world is its infamous respawn mechanic. For those who are not already aware, Return by Death of the main protagonist, Natsuki Subaru's overpowered ability, is essentially a redo button. This ability is bestowed on Subaru by the Witch of Envy, Satella, and is bathed in blood, pain, and trauma. Return by Death allows Subaru to travel back to a previous point in time in the story, to an indeterminate checkpoint that is established at least so far by what appear to be a series of mysterious criteria wholly outside of Subaru's control. These criteria are loosely tied to the progression of events within the course of the story's proper timeline. The main caveats of this ability are twofold. Namely, Subaru must gruesomely and viscerally experience the pain of each and every single one of his brutal deaths and numerous disembowelments. Secondly, Subaru, at least in the first season of the show, was constantly at risk of succumbing to terror, crushing isolation, and ultimately despair. Terror, or a pervasive sense of dread and apprehension at the looming threat that he and everyone around him will be gruesomely murdered, mutilated, or otherwise erased from history by the harsh forces of a cruel, unforgiving world and its mostly hostile, indifferent, or otherwise self-interested actors. Crushing isolation because of the way that Return by Death forces Subaru alone to live with the mental and emotional weight of the consequences of his actions. The erasure of entire timelines, clusters of memories, and landscapes of relationships are all phenomena whose emotional and mental gravity he must largely bear alone. For you see, Return by Death forbids Subaru from speaking directly of it, lest he or the people closest to him have their lives wrested away by the ethereal black violet phantom hands of Satella herself. Despair finally at the prospect of a total loss of hope for a better future, where every person that Subaru cares for is saved and where he has become a resilient and responsible person. Today I want to make the argument that the respawn mechanic in ReZero is an effective way of building complexity into the plot of the story. It is this level of complexity that stitches a sense of continuous tragic pleasure into the narrative of ReZero that also exists in the tragic stories that we tell when we make meaning about our everyday lives. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And you would naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure you could see. And after several nights, you would say, well, that was pretty great. But now let's, um, let's have a surprise. Let's have a dream which isn't under control. Well, something is going to happen to me that I don't know what it's going to be. Then you would get more and more adventurous, and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. Because we do not know in advance how the decisions Subaru makes will affect the world of Lugnika and the lives of the characters around him, we are left with a sense of anticipation or anxiety about what the possible consequences of those actions will be. This is a general principle that is also true when we hear a story about the harmful impact that someone else's decisions had on them and on the other people involved. As we watch this story, we are left with a sense of curiosity, uneasily waiting to see how Subaru will painfully and slowly learn from the mistakes he's made in his previous reincarnations to chart a path to protect himself and the people he cares for. Similarly, when we construct or are told stories about tragic events in our lives, we engage in a similar type of behavior. Intellectually, we reconcile ourselves to pessimism and we chart a path forward to continue our lives through sheer will. Tragic events are the types of events that may cause us great pain because of the dissonance between our imagination of what reality should be and the chaos of what reality actually is. But they may also be a source of great pleasure to the extent that they cast into relief our humility before the cosmic nothingness of the universe and the beauty of our ability to give it a semblance of meaning through art.
If we are to take Aristotle's word for it, our emotional reactions, the pity and fear to ReZero's plot are mainly the outcome of two elements in the plot of this story. These two elements are reversals or instances where to our astonishment or surprise, Subaru's actions lead to the opposite outcome from what he intended, and recognitions or moments when we and Subaru realize that we were ignorant about the true state of affairs and that the actions Subaru took or is about to take have had or will have unintended consequences. In a nutshell, in what Aristotle calls a complex plot, a reversal is a direct consequence of the actions that take place, whereas a recognition is an intellectual understanding of the true meaning of past and present actions. As a plot mechanic, Return by Death drives our emotional and intellectual responses to the story via reversals and recognitions. By removing the finality of death, this ability allows for constant reversals and recognitions to be built into the narrative of ReZero. It also gives the events of the story a didactic quality to them. In other words, because the threat of a permanent death for Subaru is removed, it is as if death itself is sanitized or contained. It is transformed into a phenomenon that is less to be feared than it is to be treated as an event that is to be learned from. In effect, Return by Death gives Subaru and us the ability to treat the events of the story more as learning opportunities than as irreversible failures. Even if this is not how he always chooses to see things. This is similar to how in our moments of inner fortitude we are able to treat the tragic events of our lives as learning opportunities, while in our moments of inner weakness these events may appear as referendums that prove our worthlessness. What makes these reversals and recognitions seem recognizable or logical within the plot of the story is the idea that the events of ReZero and the actions of its characters are tied by the forces of necessity and probability. What occurs in this story can be seen by us as events or actions that seem to logically follow from other events or actions. Knowing what they know and given who they are at the moment they act, this is how Subaru, Ram, or any other character would or could likely have acted in a given situation. And the consequences that follow their actions make sense given everything that we knew or didn't know about the world before or after they acted. For example, initially unbeknownst to him, in the second arc of the first season, Subaru is either going to be killed by a curse that is placed on him while he shops for materials in Erlam Village with Rem, or by Rem herself. When in his third return in this arc, he attempts to guarantee his safety through Beatrice, this results in Rem being put into a coma by the same curse through his unintentional avoidance of having gone down into the village. Given that at this point it has been established that Subaru could die either at the hands of a mysterious force or at the hands of Rem, and that certain events taking place over the span of his four days at the Roswell Manor are the trigger for these outcomes, the fact that Rem is thrown into a coma seems to logically follow as if something that was always possible. At the same time, Subaru's attempt to safeguard his own life, backfiring, is an example of both the recognition that he has followed the wrong course of action and the reversal of his actions. In accordance with necessity and probability, the presence of these reversals and recognitions is what distinguishes the complex plot of a story like ReZero from stories with what Aristotle calls simple plots. Both kinds of stories have a beginning, middle, and end, and both are marked by a change of fortune for the tragic hero, either from good to bad or from bad to better. But the defining trait of complex plots is how they incorporate recognitions and reversals to invoke the tragic pleasure synonymous with feeling and eliminating pity and fear. This distinction is evident in the difference between the capacity of the story that I just told to invoke a sense of fear through a lack of knowledge about who Subaru's killers are, or what actions will lead to his death, or pity at the undeserved suffering experienced by him and by the other main characters in the story, and the lack of a similar emotional response that we might feel were someone to tell us a story about how Subaru went to the grocery store and then came back home. Both of these stories have plots, but only the former uses recognitions and reversals to tell a story that surprises or astonishes us, while making us empathize with the mistakes committed and the unfortunate circumstances experienced by the main character. But what is this sense of tragic pleasure anyway? 
In the poetics, catharsis or the tragic pleasure is defined as the purging of pity and fear through the incitement of these emotions. A helpful way to understand this concept is through the metaphor of immunization. Immunization is a process by which the human body is injected with a pathogen which might be fatal to it. In a small enough dosage to allow the body's natural defense mechanisms, its white blood cells to neutralize the threat and develop antibodies to prevent future infections. In these situations, it is as if the introduction of a potential threat to life is what allows life itself to become stronger against future threats. For our purposes, it's useful to think of the emotional and mental processing that occurs when we consume a story with a complex plot similarly. To put it differently, the recognitions and reversals in this type of story may function much like a vaccine, introducing emotions that may lead to self-destruction and excess into our minds and bodies safely. In doing so, these stories may prepare us to predict and cope with the situations that inevitably arise in life which result in these feelings. A friend of mine in college once said that the natural state of things is disorder. The implication here was that it is human beings that bring order to reality through our language. More specifically, it is only through our stories and our myths that we can make meaning out of the senselessness of existence. I would argue that in reality, just as in fiction, stories with complex plots are more effective at eliciting a medicinal form of catharsis. For example, the fact that I have my heart broken will likely be less effective at eliciting pity and fear from others if I ought to tell a simple story about how it happened. If I tell a story about how the other person and I started dating in February and then several months later we realized that we weren't right for each other, others will understand that we broke up but the lack of reversals and recognitions will mean that virtually no catharsis about why we broke up will be induced. In other words, there will be a lack of tragic meaning if I told you my story that way. However, if I tell a story about how it was my inclination to naively trust the people I love because my parents' relationship fell apart when one couldn't trust the other, that led me to overlook how my significant other displayed signs of infidelity early on, then it becomes possible for other people to recognize where I went wrong and to see how my actions contributed to our relationship falling apart. As someone listening to my story, you might learn from the pain of my experiences, from the pity and fear that you felt upon hearing them, and choose to apply their moral lessons to your life story by preparing yourself to deal with similar situations and the feelings that accompany them. My story might just become a sort of medicine or a vaccine to guard you against the tragic nature of reality. ReZero is able to faithfully recreate the tragic storytelling aspect of human life through the recognitions and reversals that it has built into its plot. Each and every time that Subaru is murdered, whether it be at the hands of Elsa, random street thugs, Ram, Beetlejuice, or Puck, he is forced to recognize that danger lies around every corner of the world and that simple, straightforward impressions of people and courses of actions will oftentimes not yield the most favorable outcomes. Similarly, as he watches his most well-intentioned attempts to help himself or others blow up in his face, whether it be through confessing to Amelia that he is able to return by death or attempting to use moral persuasion to convince the other factions vying for the crown to protect their land village and Amelia from the witch cult, Subaru is made to understand that his actions can have the opposite effect, leading to the deaths of people he cares about, to him being taken advantage of, or to him being viewed in contempt by the people around him. Return by death makes it possible to establish a tense and uneasy balance between reality as Subaru would like it to be and reality as it is. The artful genius of this phenomenon lies in how it is true to form, in depicting the modus operandi by which human beings survive and continue to live in an oftentimes cruel and inhospitable world. It is through the art and act of storytelling that human beings stand a chance in hell in the war against the past and for the future just as it is through return by death that Subaru is forced into a similar but far more literal situation. In this way, his struggle is like our struggle, and watching him persevere is a crash course in finding strength of will in the face of seemingly insurmountable pessimism to affirm life at all turns and at all costs. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you.